My name is Alanda Kreener, and this is my Physics 2 Lab 1. The purpose of this experiment is to become familiar with and compute calculations for the concept of electric force and electric field. The objective here was to approximate the charge on a piece of clear tape. Important concepts included Coulomb's law, electric field, electric force, and gravitational force. The main result in this experiment is the finding of a piece of U-tape to have a positive charge of 1.421 times 10 to the negative 8 coulombs with 8.07 times 10 to the negative 8 deficient electrons per atom. To create a piece of charged U-tape, we used a piece of base tape on the table, laying another piece of tape on top, and quickly ripping it off. As you can see here, our U-tape attracted neutral items such as my hand, it repelled itself, and it attracted a negatively charged pen. Therefore, we can deduce that the U-tape is positively charged. I then set up a piece of U-tape on two boxes with another piece of U-tape below it as seen in this picture on the right to observe their interactions and compute the force exerted on tape B by tape A. In order to do that, we must assume that each U-tape has the same net charge, we can assume this because they were created in the same way, that all charge is located at a single center point of the tape to simplify the calculations, that there is negligible air resistance, that all measurements taken are accurate, and that the assumption that the clear tape has a density of one gram per meter. Here our system is the piece of B tape and everything else including tape A is in the surroundings and we assume that initial conditions for tape B are at rest. We assume that the only forces acting on tape B are the force of gravity and the electric force that tape A exerts on it and since it's floating and suspended in the air we can assume that the net force is zero. Here are some of my observed data including the floating gap, the tape length, the tape width, the tape surface area, and then using that density assumption from before, we can get the tape mass. We can calculate the force of gravity on tape B to be approximately 0.00216 newtons in the negative y direction, and the electric force from tape A on tape B to be 0.00216 newtons in the positive y direction. We can calculate the charge of our U-tape by rearranging Coulomb's law and solving for Q to get our 1.42 times 10 to the negative 8 coulombs. We can calculate the number of our deficient electrons by taking that charge and dividing it by the charge of an electron. We can estimate the number of atoms in our tape by taking our tape surface area divided by our estimated area of an atom. And then we can get that ratio of deficient electrons per atom by taking our total deficient electrons and dividing it by our total number of atoms to get 8.07 times 10 to the negative 8 deficient electrons per atom. The first model I created models the charges on each tape as a single point charge. I calculated the force of gravity and took the absolute value of that force to estimate the electric force on tape B from tape A as the net Y force is zero and rearranged Coulomb's law as seen before to solve for Q. I also created two spheres for the tapes along with their gravitational force arrows. I then used my electric field function to compute the electric force observed from tape A on tape B by multiplying the charge of B by the electric field observed at tape B from tape A and did the same thing for the force of B on A. Finally, I estimated Q needed at A by dividing the electric force on A by the electric field observed at A and did the same thing for B. As predicted, the model found the same answer as my hand calculations with a charge needed of 1.42 times 10 to the negative 8 coulombs. The second model represents the tapes as line charges, where the total charge of tape is spread evenly across the length. Here you can see the function that creates a line of spheres with n equals 10 separate points to create each line charge. To calculate the net electric force exerted on tape B, I first initialize that as a zero vector, and then use a function that calculates the electric field at each of the top 10 points using superposition of the 10 bottom points. I also iteratively calculated the electric force at each point on the top tape, adding it to a net total each time, and created a green arrow representing the electric field at each top tape point. The output of this shows us that using the charge we calculated in the previous model is too small when it needs to be spread out as a line charge. The goal is to find the charge that allows for the magnitude of the electric force to equal the magnitude of the gravitational force, so we need to scale it up. We can find the appropriate scale factor by taking the square root of our gravitational force magnitude over our electric force magnitude, which happened to be around 2.07. I then multiplied that by our initial charge to get a new total charge to be spread out amongst the 10 points, and now the model outputs a figure in which the magnitude of the forces are equal. If charges were swapped, we'd have the same observations. Instead, our U-tape would just be negatively charged, and we'd be calculating excess electrons instead, but like still repels like, and opposites still attract. Our second model is more accurate because in reality, we have many different particles interacting with each other on the top and bottom tapes, respectively. And if you take the same amount of charge and spread it over a line, on average, the distance between them will increase. 
and there's some vector calculation. Therefore, we need to increase the total charge on the tapes to make up for this decrease in force.